But the deci- decisions we saw in that game today, if you're not concerned as a football fan, and it isn't just Brighton, Tottenham today, Tottenham are not favoured because they're Tottenham. There's no conspiracy to help Tottenham. The lack of quality in the officiating in this country with VAR has become a joke and it is an abomination to the game. We've seen many of these decisions recently. Rashford rightful penalty not given against Southampton as an example. And many, many others. Lines not being drawn on offsides. The wrong players being given of offside in Brighton, Ch- uh, South, uh, Crystal Palace games recently. And then today, first of all, Matoma's first goal, this given as handball, when it's clearly hit his chest first, and then it does top the bicep. But the up until the sleeve line of the arm, it's not handball. How do we know this? We know this because that part of your arm on a defender keeps players on side. It keeps players on side because you're allowed to play the ball with it. Therefore, if the ball touches this part of your arm and chest, it should never be given as handball. The second decision, this is the only angle shown. They said that hit the arm. It is completely inconclusive. They didn't zoom in. They didn't look at any other camera angles. And they disallowed this goal. Then, the most egregious, the most devastating of them all, was this clear-cut penalty. Hoyerberg misses the ball and then stands on Matoma's foot. Stands on Matoma's foot. It is a penalty every single day of the week. Ray Childs would have given it. Stevie Wonder would have given it. I even saw, legitimately, I even saw Spur, Big Spurs aggregator account say, I have no idea how that wasn't a penalty. VAR has become a sham. Now, Spurs fans, I think I'm having a go at their club. I'm not. Listen to the words coming out of my mouth. Please clear your ears out and stop being. This is about football because this isn't Spurs didn't get the the results today because it paid the ref because it's a conspiracy for them to win. There's a conspiracy to keep Brighton out of the top four. Since Howard Webb came in, VAR decisions have regressed tenfold. So many clear and obvious mistakes are being made and they're not being rectified. Twice we've seen in the Premier League in recent weeks, players crawling on the floor like a toddler, balls hit in their hands, no penalties given. That is just another prime example. The two handballs, listen again, there's no conclusive evidence. I've listened to the commentators who were very neutral in this game. They were like, oh, that, that would be a goal. It's hit the chest clearly. <gasps> wow, not given. Oh, I think that'd be a pen. Look at the clear contact on his foot, not given. Spurs fans will celebrate today, and rightfully so. Their team has won. Their team has got three points. They need those three points. It's important to them. But football fans, don't take your anger out on Tottenham. It isn't their fault. You should be focusing on the officials. And Spurs fans celebrating it, saying, I don't care, I don't care. You should. Because not calling out poor decision-making only guarantees that at some point in the future, you are going to be robbed by it as well. It may cost you a place in the Champions League. And until fans come together and push back against this, we're going to continue to see it. VAR came in and, of course, made mistakes. But it was used as a tool to rectify mistakes not seen by the referee. Now it's very rarely overturning decisions. It's They're breaking football. Today, Brighton were the better team. They played the better football. They had the most chances. They scored two goals that were wrongfully disallowed. There is no evidence they struck an arm or were controlled by an arm. The still shots, the videos show it didn't touch below the, 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 below the shirt line. Therefore, it isn't handball. And a clear penalty denied. That is potentially three goals scrapped off. And I'm embarrassed as a football fan to see this. Called the same thing out when we saw Wolverhampton Wanderers goal against Liverpool. Not given. When it was clearly onside. And they let play go on for like 10 minutes. They broke the protocols to give it. We saw a Mo Salah goal given this year. It was clearly... Um, offside. The player didn't make a play for the ball. Two days later, 
Rashford has a goal disallowed that takes away a record from him that hasn't been broken for 70 odd years at Man United for the exact same thing. VAR is breaking football matches and it is damaging football now. It used to rectify bad decisions. It is now amplifying them to the nth degree. And it's, it's an embarrassment. It really is. It really is. And it will damage. And it will damage your football club. Celebrate it all you want. But it's going to come back and bite you in the backside as well. And I've been saying this for a long, long time now. And people don't want to listen. Because what they really want, they're, they're very, very, people are very narrow-minded. And they focus on their own football club. That is all I care about. And I understand that to a degree. But you've got to wake up and smell the coffee. They're killing football. They're damaging football. They really are. Today's game was ruined by VAR. Not for Tottenham fans. They love it but for the rest of football and not because Spurs won. It ain't about you. It's about the right decisions. We can accept these bad decisions when referees were making in-play decisions at full speed with no help from replays. They literally now have the replays. When Rashford should have had a penalty two weeks ago, somebody said to me, Terry, but it's only with slow motion that you can see it's a penalty. That's exactly what VAR is for. So you can have another look. It's honest to God, an an embarrassment. Aside from that embarrassment today, we're going to bring panel out on the show soon. So stay with us. Make sure like buttons are being hit. Subscribe to the Football Terrace as well. Plus, listen, number 29 in the UK, uh, the Football Terrace podcast, the top six is right now. Thank you all for downloading it. If you haven't done it yet, scan the QR code on the screen or click on the link in the description below. Another embarrassment today, Chelsea, Frank Lampard back, no difference in performance. Why are we not surprised to see any difference in performance as football fans? Why are Chelsea fans not surprised? Because he is a bang average manager. The decision to bring him in to steady the ship, the populist decision, I'm telling you what it is now. It's because they have no idea what direction they're going in as a football club. They have no idea of the ideology, the style of play, none of it. They have zero idea about what they want to do as a football club. They don't know if they want Luis Enrique. They don't know if they want Jose Mourinho. Chelsea fans will play down the links to managers they don't want as being fake news. Stereotypical. All fans do that for their club. Any news from the same journalists that they like, they say it's brilliant news and they don't call it fake. Um, it's about it's as transparent as a window on a bright sunny day, but they were absolutely shocking again today, Chelsea. Yes, they had the majority of the ball, and they probably in the end, I haven't checked the stats since about the 60th minute, had more shots. I would assume uh, 13 to nine uh, they had, um, but only one on target again from Chelsea. It's becoming an abomination, and the reason that I said Frank Lampard's a bad appointment. Is because he's he's not going to galvanize his squad because he broke the squad because of bad man management the first time round. This is purely to appease proper Chelsea Minerals FC. Oh, it's going to be okay because he gets the club. Can't get you to fucking score though, can he? Can't get you to play the ball properly. You should have made a decision on what type of manager you want. How much due diligence do you need to do? Luis Enrique wants the job. He's the best available. Plays the right style of football. He'd get you playing. The way Todd Bowley and co are running Chelsea right now is Chelsea fans should be in panic mode. Yes, he's not making the final decisions. Yes, they're brought in all these sporting directors. But it's the fact they've made this decision. You don't get between now and the end of the season to build up some confidence and to get the squad galvanized ahead of the summer to really hit pre-season moving. They're going to start pre-season flat-footed. And if you understand that expression, imagine being in a race and you're standing up and you're flat-footed facing the wrong way. Everybody else is in the the, the get ready, uh, you know, get ready, set position. And then the the buzzer goes off, the gun goes off. How that you're never going to catch up. You're never going to catch up. By the time you turn around and start moving, they're already 10 meters ahead of you. And I know it's hard for Chelsea fans you know, you've got Astrid Wet out here, literally f- over the news. You've got proper chills. Ah, oh, minerals, we're back. He gets us proper chills. Yeah. With their farts, stinking the jelly deals and pie and mash. 
But the damage in your club, you've got to call it out. It doesn't bother me on a football level. I'm a Man United fan. But I look at it and just think another hugely regressive move. And today, 